This echocardiogram shows a young woman with right ventricular enlargement. The contrast study demonstrated a significant amount of contrast bubbles passing from the right heart to the left heart. In this view, a large coronary sinus is visible, but the atrial septum appears intact. Now let's focus on the transesophageal echocardiographic views. This shows a dilated coronary sinus with agitated saline injected into the left antecubital vein, which drains through the coronary sinus. This is indicative of a persistent left SVC. In fact, the left SVC, which should have obliterated during embryonic development, is draining directly into the coronary sinus, causing its dilation. This bicaval view confirms uh, that the inner atrial septum is intact and there is no atrial septal defect. However, a shunt is present. The question is, where is the shunt? This view shows the left atrium and a dilated coronary sinus on the left. However, the inferior part of coronary sinus is not intact. And color Doppler imaging reveals turbulent flow specifically in the coronary sinus region. This contrast study shows the contrast draining into the coronary sinus, with contrast bubbles passing through a defect in the inferior part of the coronary sinus. This indicates intracardiac shunt at the site of coronary sinus, consistent with an unroofed coronary sinus. This 3D view shows the defect of the coronary sinus wall indicating absence of the wall separating the coronary sinus from left atrium. This condition is also known as coronary sinus type ASD. The atrial wall between the coronary sinus and left atrium is either partially or completely absent, resulting in a left-right shunt. This anomaly is most commonly associated with a persistent left SVC although it can also be part of more complex congenital heart defects. In this 3D echocardiographic view, the aortic valve is seen at the top, the mitral valve annulus in the middle, and the dilated coronary sinus located posterior to the mitral valve. The disease may present with symptoms such as dyspnea, fatigue, or even cyanosis, recurrent respiratory infection, brain abscess, or cerebral emboli can also occur. Although this type of shunt is rare, it should be suspected in the presence of right ventricular enlargement, persistent left SVC, unexplained arterial oxygen desaturation, or cerebral complications.